Ziratzon, Parashat Vayeshev, 5783, Limut Shabi Rav Sivan ben Sima. And uh, Bezrat Hashem was a uh, Zoha to play uh, basketball yesterday with Moreno Rabbeinu Rib Avi Karakowski. And as we're shooting around, he says to me, Yair, what's the story with Yehuda and Tamar? The whole parak of Lamechet, such a weird story. A Yered Yehuda Me'etechav, Yehuda abandoned his brothers. And he goes to Tamar. What's going on in this story? And we want to try and offer uh, a reading from the Ishbitzer Rebbe, the Meshiloch, to really fully get deeper into the story of Yehuda and Yosef. There's no way when we get to the climax of Breshi to abandon the difference between Yosef and Yehuda. The best way in our parsha to differentiate the two personalities is Perak Lamed Zayin and Perak Lamed Chet. Perak Lamed Zayin, Yosef, is considered to be such an evil character. And he's uh, speaking badly about his brothers. And because of this, the terrible story of Vayim Kirulo V'mechir Na'alayim that we read about on Tisha B'Av, they were willing to sell him as if he was shoes. They throw him into a pit. What monetary value are we going to gain from killing him? These are sentences that Yosef is slapped with for speaking not nicely about his brothers. So it's not a great thing to do. But really, is that the amount of aggravation and anger and discipline that's supposed to be given to a kid listening to his father, trying to be nice to his brothers. Really, this kid needs to go down into a pit and live with snakes? And then you get to the next parak. The Yered, which is a decision. Not like Parak Lamited, the Yosef Urad was thrown. Yuda decides to abandon his brothers. And he decides to marry a non-Jew. And he decides to have children that emulate him that are not willing to help each other. Let's compare that to Yosef. This is considered way out there. This guy is wild. He is the worst. What's the punishment? Oh, he has a child. And that child is going to be, Peret's going li- to have a, at the end of the Peret Lamechet, gives a birth to, to Peret. Gonna later be the great 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 grandfather of Mashiach. What? Yuda just left his brothers, did everything that you would ever imagine that's the worst actions in the world, and Mashiach is born from him. And really, it's not a simple answer. The Meshilach offers a very deep, deep, deep understanding that I think if we understand it gives a different way of looking at many aspects of life, including why do bad things happen in the world, including what do we do when we don't feel like tefillah is working. A lot of things that come down to two words called yosher ve'igulim. The, the Ishmael Zarebi, he says that Hashem interacts with our world in two ways. One is a direct way. The direct way is X equals X. You did a sin, you get punished. You did a mitzvah, you get a reward. Like we learned when we were four years old. If you act a little bit bad, we'll punch you. And if you do a little bit good, you'll get a marshmallow. Shkoyach. Everything is direct. My actions are the be all end all of the way things work. And if I say X, it means X. And if I do X, I'll get X. Everything is very clear. What about the igul? What about the circle? So when you think about the circle, it doesn't work like that. The circle, when you're on the bottom, you're going up. When you're on the top, you're going to the bottom, and there's no clear angles. It's very, very unclear. And it's a very indirect, very un 
beautiful way of looking at things, that they're all moving all the time. Right? The lines make squares that they're very steady. They don't move. But the circles, they're moving around all the time. I don't know where I'm going. I'm lost. I don't understand anything. And that's another way that Hashem interacts with the world so that we don't see ourselves as a God. That there are things that Hashem decides that has zero to do with our actions. And Hashem says, I will interact with the world so that you realize that you are not the center and that's the greatest present I'll ever give you that you are not the center of the universe. And so when we analyze the world on Yosher, that's where the question is coming from. What? Yosef is like a good kid. Yud is a bad kid. On the level of a box, it's very clear what's going to happen. But the idea of the story here is to realize that there's two things going on all the time simultaneously. There's Hashem dealing with us as the center of the world that you'll share, and we can change things and affect things. But there's another way of Hashem interacting with the world that says, it can't only be based on your actions. It can't only be based on the way that you do things. There needs to be a level of realizing that with every great talent that I have, there is also things that I'm disabled from. And maybe your greatest ability is to know your disability. And maybe the story of Yehuda is not that he merited to have Mashiach. But that Hashem was saying, I want Mashiach to be coming from a place where you're ready to know that surprises are possible. That there could be a miracle of Hanukkah. That, that, that oil, which is so sweet and, and, and zach, and a wick that's so ichy and animalistic, can live together. That's a miracle. It's a miracle that people were willing to Fight for the religion. It's a miracle. But the idea of the miracle is to realize that there's an idea of Yehuda in the world. That it's not based on his actions. Based on his actions, he was out. But Hashem says, that's exactly where I want to appear. Because I don't want you to think that surprises are impossible. Mashiach is a surprise. And if you're not educating by surprise, if you're not teaching by surprise, if you're not living with surprises, if you're not surprising yourself, then you don't really believe in what Mashiach is about. The Mashiach doesn't come only from our actions. It comes from our ability to be open for new things to happen. Siyad Ishmael, we should be open for the candles. We should be open to our Shalom Bayit and the, and, the, and the candles that we're lighting in our home and the, and the candles that we're lighting for the world on Hanukkah. Siyad Ishmael, we should be Zoha to internalize this story of Yosef who's Yosher, and Yehuda, who's Igulim, and to live with this duality in the world, that there are things that are clear, and there are things that we'll do that will come straight forward. And there's also the need to understand that there are so many elements that are so not in our hands. To not be afraid of that and embrace that. Shabbat Shalom.